Okay, so I had to manually tweak my browser so it doesn't clip the bottom of the slides, but we'll try this. So this was the title I initially proposed was 10 Weird Applications of Public Key Crypto. You should actually look at all my proposals. They were all link bait style, but this is the one these guys picked. But after writing the talk, I realized that wasn't good enough. So this is the 20-minute slot, so we're going to have fun. <laughs> all right. Who in here knows what public key cryptography even is? Who in here thinks they've used it before? You ever heard of this thing called HTTPS? <laughs> it's required for that. All right. So yeah, as he mentioned, I am at Dapply trying to save the world's data so people can own their own stuff. And there's a, my job is making it secure and user friendly, which is really challenging. So I've been learning lots of cool stuff. In fact, um, let me tell you a quick story. I don't have a lot of time. Back I used, to, I used to work as an hourly consultant for various firms and this one place hired me to implement TLS in the browser in JavaScript. Pro tip, don't do that. <laughs> but I learned that generating RSA key pairs on an iPhone in Safari is just not feasible at all. The CPU power required to do that is just not there. But in recent years, new algorithms have come out. In particular, this library, LibSodium, has really, really fast and secure algorithms. And if you look at some of the stuff I highlighted, they support JavaScript and WebAssembly. So who's excited about that? This is, this is first class crypto. This is better than the stuff that SSH currently uses by default. Available in the browser. And um, like the public key crypto in this is ED25519. I think you can generate something like 900,000 signatures per second. Whereas your SSH key, if you're on a slower computer, will take a few seconds to generate. So, I mean, it's a million times faster. So what can we do with this newfound superpower of crypto in the browser? What indeed? Well, let's start on this. <laughs> Number one, sealed boxes. I'm gonna give you an analogy. Bob wants to send a message to Alice. He wants to ensure that only Alice can read the message. Bob and Alice are like the typical people in crypto talks. And but he doesn't want to know or need to know that it came from him. This is what a sealed box is. You want to send a message to someone, you know that they get it, and that's all that matters. And so what Alice is going to do is give away a whole bunch of padlocks to people that only she has the key to. And so if you want to send her a message, you just lock it with the padlock, leave the box on her door, and there you go. She doesn't know who it came from. You can do this with public key crypto, and it's called a sealed box. In LibSodium, it's got a whole bunch of mumbo jumbo here about what it is. The important thing is you can send anonymous secure messages as long as you have someone's public key. As long as you get their public key through some secure means, you can send them secure messages. And this is how hard that is in JavaScript. The pink functions are the ones in the LibSodium library. So here I'm generating a key pair, just for the purpose of this demo. You'd, beforehand, you'd have them generated separately. Take a message, I'm sealing the message. So it's encrypted. And then Alice, with her private key, you see here, see here can then decrypt the message. That's it, that's not a lot of code, is it? And it runs super crazy fast. All right, number two, wait, what? You just thought there were a lot. <laughs> Public key signatures. <laughs> Now, who's used signatures before? Git has these built in. Did you know that? You can sign your Git tags. And GitHub even has a little UI for it. It'll check your PGP key. So signatures are fun. It's the, I guess the closest analogy is like, you know, that wax stamp or a signature on a check. It proves that it came from you. It doesn't encrypt it or give any sort of privacy. It just proves the message came from you. And uses for this are like you're downloading a package from someone, you trust the publisher, but you wanna make sure your ISP or hoster or GitHub or whoever you don't trust didn't mess with it. And so signatures are a way to cryptographically know if a message has been untampered with. And again, Libsodian has a built-in API for this. It lets you, as long as you trust the public key, again, that's the hard part, but once you have someone's public key, once you trust it, you can do really cool things. And here's, how you, here's one of the ways. So I got my key pair, I got a message, and I'm doing a detached signature where the signature is separate. There's another one where they're combined. And then I just verify it. One line of code each. And then, actually I'm supposed to be showing you these. 
So actually, if you want, I can run these, maybe. This is where holding the mic was a bad idea. All right. So if we go. All right, well, that's boring. But let me show you the code on the slide. So I signed it, I sent it, and then the channel changed the message from 7 p.m. to midnight because they wanted me to stay up really late. But then when I went to verify it, it came back as verified faults. That's what we expected, right? But I'm showing you this is actual code, it's actually working, this is just normal Chrome. Works great. Maybe I won't show all of them. The, the results are kind of boring for the most part. All right, number, whatever you call that, zero, one, one. 11, three, yeah, I never understood how you say, yeah, anyway, authenticated encryption. Oh, and here's where the binary is fun, because what was the first one? Zero, zero, 001 was you encrypt it, and one zero was you sign it. Well, this is you encrypt it and sign it, one one. Now we're getting fancy. Yes. <laughs> I spend way too much time planning these titles. <laughs> All right. So this one is basically the other two combined. I'm not gonna read all of this, but the basic idea is you know who it's from and only the person who's the intended recipient can read it. So you get verified integrity checking, you get privacy, you get encryption, you basically get the whole nine yards. And all you have to know is they have to know your public key and you have to know their public key. And as long as you know each other's public keys, you can have secure um, authenticated communications. And so here I generate two key pairs, make a message. I don't know why Bob wants to meet Alice by the Blue Lagoon, but he does, and he doesn't want anyone to know about it. And there's also a nonce here. So a nonce is a one-time random thing. Some of these crypto algorithms, if you reuse the same keys for too much stuff, there's weaknesses in the algorithms, people can hack it. And so what you do is some of these, they, they tell you to use a nonce, which you include in the clear, but that way it's it's like a different hash set for each time. It's, it's similar to the idea of salting and a hash, if you've ever done that before. It just makes the attack that much harder, makes the crypto that much more secure. This API says you should use one, so I generate one. And then this is crypto box easy, because it really is. I take my message, my nonce, Alice's public key and Bob's private key, and I encrypt it, and that's encrypted. And then down here, Alice, using her private key and Bob's public key, can then decrypt it. Now the cool thing about public key crypto is there's no shared keys. All you have to do is publish your public key, that's why it's called public, and you can communicate with people. You don't have to say, all right, here's the secret password, give it to the people I want. And that's useful for a lot of reasons. All right, man, this talk's going by faster than I thought, huh, or is it? Number 100, key exchange. Using the key exchange API, two parties can securely compute a set of shared keys using their peer's public key and their own secret key. What I just say about shared keys and not needing them? Well, public key crypto is kind of slow. What if I want to download a two gigabyte movie over HTTPS? I mean, first of all, I hope you have good bandwidth. Hope it's not breaking copyright either, but with a shared key, then we can use symmetric cryptography like AES or one of the new ones like Cha-Cha or Salsa. They're really into dancing these days when they name these things. Um, and you can do the faster, more efficient, more secure crypto that requires symmetric keys where it's the both, you both have the same key. And so what this API does, and this is similar to what browsers do, is as long as we know each other's public keys and we don't know each other's private keys, we can still generate the same identical shared keys. And no one else in the world can generate those shared keys unless they know our secret private keys. And so this API again is really simple. So the client here needs to know, whoops, don't click on that. The client needs to know its public key, its private key, and the server's public key, which the client knows. And likewise, the server needs to know three, but not the client's private key. We don't ever share private keys with other people. There's a reason they're called private. You don't share your privates. Those keys are not for sharing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, yeah, I could run this one if you want. It's pretty boring. The asserts just pass. But now that we have shared keys, we can do some cool stuff. So let's start the counter over. Supporting technologies. Here's where it gets interesting. So we saw four basic applications of public key crypto. You can sign, you can encrypt, you can sign and encrypt, you can, do, uh, you can generate shared keys, and there's a million other things, but that's just the four main ones. Who here has heard of content addressable storage? I don't see many hands. Who's heard of BitTorrent? Blockchain? Git? They use these kind of things. Um, content addressable storage is a key value store where your key is derived from your value. The value is the address. So in Git, when you add git add a file, Git will literally take that file, take the SHA-1 of it, and that's your key. So you know how those git commits and git tags are always those big long hex characters? Those are SHAs, S-H-A-1. And the way it works is you can only point to things that already exist. You can't create cycles because you can only point to things by hash. You can't hash it unless it exists. And if you try to point back to the thing that pointed to you, you've now modified something. And if you modify the content, then the key is gonna be changed because the key was a hash of the content. So content addressable storage is immutable. But that means you have really cool properties in distributed systems. One, you can verify data has not been tampered with. And you can create a tree of things that are not tampered with. So by using just the, the commit of a git tree, the, here, let me graph it here. So these pink ones are files, the blue ones are trees, the green ones are commits. You notice the commits point to the parent commits, and then I have a ref heads master as a moving pointer, points to one of the commits, and then a tag points to another. You can verify the whole tree with just the top hash, because if anything deep down in the tree changed, that change would propagate up. Otherwise, one of the hashes somewhere is gonna fail, and you'll have a has hash mismatch. What's that gotta do with public and private keys? Well, what if I wanted to make signed storage? Because with a content addressable system, it's immutable. You can't ever publish new changes. But with a public key, I can publish new hashes, sign those hashes with my public key that people already know, and then people can verify the new content that exists after they got my key. So this is a great way to publish software. And this is what GPG signed Git tags are all about. And the, the code for this, this is a very simple store retrieve. I want to store some binary thing with an optional private key, optionally sign it, hash it, and then same thing on retrieve, verify the hash. And then here's a cool little use of it using async await, where I just store some stuff and retrieve it, and it's all verified, I got my keys. So now we have this really cool system that we can distribute, we can sign, fun stuff. Um, yeah, but let's not stop there. Let's get some more cool words. Who's heard of a Merkle tree? Really, interesting. I used to think this was the same as a content addressable tree. I was wrong. So a Merkle tree is this really cool binary tree where your leaf nodes are the data points. And it's basically, they're used for logs, where you just have some stream of events that you want to publish and be verifiable. And then each pair of events has hashed together. And then those are hashed together till your tree eventually goes up to one or more roots. And so when you're distributing something this way, you only have to sign the roots. You don't have to sign everything. And if you want to verify the tree, you can just download a subset of the data set. So this is used for really huge data sets, gigabytes of data. You can just download on demand only the parts you're interested in, only verify the parts you're interested in, and have an extremely efficient distributed data set. And again, you just sign the roots using public keys. Um, now the problem with this was some paths, and this was, oh, I can't get into the details, this is complicated. But this is a system that I kind of designed based on DAT's file system design, where I map a file system onto this linear tree. So each time a file is modified or deleted, I add a new entry, and it's got these indexes. But these indexes will really get bloated. You see here, I've only done four events, and I've already got, oh, go back, and I've already got all this index data. So these, these numbers here, if I wanted to look up, say, answer.js and source, 
I say, all right, all right, source, who has source? All right, two and three has source. All right, let me go ask three and which one? And yeah, I don't know. It's, those are indexes, so you can very quickly do random access to the full history. But if you have a file system that's really bloated at one point, it's going to be super inefficient. So hash array map trees to the rescue. And this is tree with an IE. Yeah, but the guy that, the guy that invented it said it's pronounced tree. But you can, you can call it a try if you want. Who's heard of these? Man, we, I'm, I got to teach some crypto. <laughs> so these are really cool. So the idea is that index issue I had was a problem. So what if I took my keys, my paths, and I hashed them? So now I got this semi-random bit of ones and zeros. Now a tree, T-R-E, is a type of table where you just take two bits or four bits or whatever and you go down the binary tree and fill in things as you need them. It's a very efficient hash-like data structure, but it performs better than an actual hash tree. Now in JavaScript, we generally don't worry about this. We just use the built-in object and we don't worry about how it looks up keys and values internally. But if you start making distributed system where your objects split across different databases, different file systems, different networks, then it matters. But basically what this allows is my keys can be paths in whatever shape I want. They can be really broad where I have a hundred, I don't know, I mean, have you ever looked at a modern JavaScript project? How many files are in your root directory? More than I would like. And so this, this lets you have now a generic key value system with any path. Are we in the weeds yet? Yeah, am I losing you? And, but it's efficient, it's fast. And there's open source code for this in the DAT project already and fun stuff. Okay, I don't know why I signed up for the short slot. <laughs> All right, if, I ha if I've lost you, I will publish the slides. This is cool stuff, I promise. Um, now here's one more idea. What if we took our public key and kept it a secret and only gave the public key to people we wanted to be able to talk to our server and then use the public key as the encryption cert so that we didn't have to involve certificate authorities to have TLS-like connections? So we can create true peer-to-peer -peer systems that connect to each other more secure than TLS, not involve any outside parties, and be super efficient to boot. Now, we need to somehow discover each other, so we're gonna use BitTorrent's DHT, but we're not gonna actually put the public keys in there because then that's the decryption password we're telling too much. So now the public's not even public. And there's a lot of text here. But come talk to me later, it's cool stuff. But basically, this is a system where with nothing, knowing nothing more than the public key, which is only 32 bytes, by the way, they're short. You can use them as your URL, hex encoded. You can find a service, connect to the service anonymously, and have a secure communication with said service. And if they use that same public key to, to sign all of their roots in their Merkle tree or their content tree or whatever they use, you can also verify everything they send to you. And you don't need to talk to any central servers or any oracles or anyone outside of each other and it's 100% secure as long as we trust these algorithms. And these are pretty well supported algorithms in the crypto community. So yeah, I'm gonna end there. Um, these are just some crazy things to think about more into public key ways. Uh, ring signatures are a way to leak information without people knowing who exactly leaked it, but still knowing it came from a group. So for example, this came from a high ranking White House official. We know this, but we don't know which one, so they can't be fired. And deniable authentication is the person who gets the message, they, knows it, they know it came from you, but no one else knows it came from you. And threshold rings, it, came, it was signed by five of six White House officials or whatever. I mean, there's, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with public. I really could do 100 items, but not in a 20-minute talk. So that's what I got. Thank you.